tiles up. Well, again. Hi everyone. Long time no, long time no record. Long time no speak. Um, so where are we? Where are we with this this uh, recording project? Hello, people. Um, a few updates. Uh, okay. The wonders of recording. <clears throat> right, where were we? Sorry about that. I had a, a weird little capture thing up on the side of the screen there. Um, that I hadn't seen before. I don't know if I've put a slow card in there, but it seemed to be capturing in chunks and reading it off on the side of the screen. <clears throat> anyway. Nice. Okay, a little gentle sloping thing, thoughtful. I don't know where it's going to go, this is all I've got. It's another extra thing, which I can do without all these new things, but you know what it's like when you fiddle around with this stuff, this technology, just ideas kind of happen and you can't ignore them. Good morning again, and here we are. It is January 2017. January, what's changed? Not much. Hello again, it is um, the end of January. So, where are we with the recording? Regarding the Genelex, <clears throat> what I love about them is the quality. And you can tell by the, quali the quality of them by just listening to the on switch. It is now uh, March, We're just um, midway through March, yep. Yeah. And, uh, what have we found this month? Um, so, update. Well, I think at the end of April uh, I made a recording, uh, said I should have a couple of numbers done in May, um, and indeed that's that's come to pass. We're now in June, early June, um, and uh, I, in, in fact, I wrote an extra number based on just a, a really nice guitar sound that I had, <coughs> and um, that sort of hung around for a couple of weeks, and then I. Uh, embellish that and um, yeah a complete number came out of that but when I actually looked at the track list of uh, current items I've got I've got the 10 tracks in fact I've got about 20 but I've got 10 that I've separated out that hang together quite well. Hello again. Um, <clears throat> it's the 3rd of October and um, where are we with the music? Well not that much further on. Um, obviously this is this is a project that's been juggled with uh, at work, so it's got to take a bit of a backseat.
Um, one extra point uh, I forgot to mention actually on the last video was um, uh, just an, an interesting technique that I've that I've got into um, when it comes to singing. Uh, and as I've mentioned many times before, uh, initially I might sing Goldie Goop just to get the melody line over um, my music. And then I will pull it back in the mix so I can just hear it, so you can, I can hear the voice but I can't necessarily hear the words. And I do that on purpose so that, I can, so that it makes me think of words or lines that I can use to, to, to start invoking a lyric. So anyway, just uh, had a thought, it's November the 6th. <clears throat> I can remember doing a video about this time last year saying um, I, I'd started the project and we're still here now, not finished yet, but almost. Hello. Okay, it is uh, January 2018 and um, <clears throat> I've been, or you have possibly been dipping into these videos and seeing the same start, basically the same shots and uh, the same introduction, and it's where are we? And um, where we are now in January, where we've, we've, we're getting to the end of this whole project of um, the third album by Big Blue Car, or BBC Three, um, <clears throat> and um, we're doing very well actually. Um, when I look at the whole package now, I've got all 10 tracks. Uh, I have one um, track to finish, which is initially called The Boot, The Drum, um, which actually is an older track. I've probably had that track sitting around for about all the parts of it. It's uh, uh, the embryo of the track probably for about four years, four or five years, maybe even longer than that. But I, I pulled it out because I really like the particular um, sort of New York-y garage, garaged drum beat. <clears throat> Just able to ride a few guitar, a quick guitar lines, and it stuck with me. So I, I, I re-recorded it and came up with a slightly more um, coherent version of that idea. Anyway, that's the last track I have to do. Hello. A quick update. Another one um, is now March 2018. And um, going back through some old videos, I, I can remember saying, or hoping, wishing that um, I'd be able to put this um, this new album to bed by now. And um, that's just not been the case. Uh, it would have been nice get it in before spring, ramp up to the uh, uh, to the summer, and then I could take a little bit of time off and just concentrate on my full time work. Um, or other projects that I've, uh, I'd like to get started. Anyway, that's that's not happened, um, and uh, essentially it hasn't happened for um, one main reason, which um, I've mentioned before. Um, I just got stuck on one track, finishing one one of the last track of the ten. Uh, I almost thought about um, cutting the track out completely so that I could get get it sent out for mastering. Um, I'm not going to do the mastering myself. I'm just I don't I just don't have the confidence to do it here so I will pay to have it done elsewhere with someone that I know just up the road. Uh, anyway so this this track was just doing my head in. Um, 
I got stuck with it. And uh, this, I think this brings about a, uh, a dilemma that um, when you're trying to do stuff that's uh, uh, creative and it, it, it's a requirement that you do it to a certain quality, all that um, you don't have the creative spark or juice or the content there to do enough with it. Um, which was um, uh, certainly the case for me with this one track. Um, and I suppose I wanted to just really share how I got out of, of that little um, dilemma, that, that pit that I've dug myself into. Hello, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Um, it's been a while since I've done one of these video diaries and uh, <coughs> we're now in uh, May 2018 um, so where have I got to? Bring on the sunset at 51 we shape-shifting starlings collide Take a break, write in a different situation, delete the title that you are you have bought in. So if there's anything that you've bought in content-wise, pretend it's not there or delete it. Um, I'm so used to hearing the track that I'm hearing notes that aren't there. I'm hearing the resonance of the bass that is playing a note, but my brain is telling me that it's actually also playing the other note that isn't there anymore even though I can because I know that I can hear the bass in the background uh, so yeah I was I was uh, I was really surprised and I, and, and I was thinking well that's something else to look out for isn't it because if you're doing this sort of thing all day and you're misrepresenting your own music uh, in that in that way because you kind of overindulge in listening to it um, it's uh, it I think it sort of catches you makes you misstep it's um, it, it was just a weird thing and I, and I and I honestly thought that I had a I doubled up on the bass somewhere and I just hadn't changed one of the channels sometimes I'll have a very low bass and I'll copy it into a different sound maybe synth bass which is more clippy and poppy and I'll blend the two together and I want I wondered whether I'd done that made a track stack um, put two basses together and one was hidden. Not the case. It was just the one bass I had, just one bass guitar. Uh, uh, and it, of course, we're talking MIDI here. Um, and um, yeah, I could just, I could, I would swear to you that it was playing the, the old notes, and they weren't. They weren't there at all. If, you know, if you're someone like me who doesn't doesn't read music or write music, um, it, it's it, the more complicated you make things where you, you, you're you using chords that sound like they go but actually when you've got a number of instruments together there is a, there will be a, an odd clash somewhere um, that's happened only a, a few times but it, it's, um, it only really reveals itself when you listen to a few things in isolation uh, in isolation so very important lesson I learned then <clears throat> and um, I think that's it. I've, I've um, gone on a little bit too long. Um, I hope you're not too bored. Um, so there's a, a lot of um, systematic produ production, but there's also a system to the creativity. And I think very often that gets, um, I think that, that, that gets lost, especially if you aren't trained um, in doing commercial uh, creative work. Um, I am, but I think I'd actually forgotten the point. I used to do sort of a, a don't particularly care, but tell me what you think. Um, because I need the exposure. And uh, I, also at this stage, actually that's probably quite a flippant thing, I don't care. Um, I'm not going to be crushed if people don't like it because I'm used to people not liking stuff that I do. Uh, it's, it's because it's all very subjective. 
um, I, I just have to do the best that I can do and uh, I've got a lot out of this um, it's just wonderful writing music and it's more than, than a cathartic experience it's, um, it's just something that I just just love doing hello um, it's been such a, such a, a while since I've done um, one of these videos such a long time such a long time I started to think now about the package uh, now that I'm getting the tracks together about an album album cover title of the album not sure yet um, I've, I've made some graphics which uh, uh, which I, I might use. This is called Unplugged. Um, this, I had a little notebook made just as a tester. That one, Absence Makes. I think you could probably interpret the themes here. The idea behind it, which is that uh, there's, a, there's a, a child there, a kid there who's completely plugged into uh, uh, the, the world on mobile phone or a tablet, tablet head. Um, so, on the one hand, he's unplugged from the world, and there are birds flying behind him. Um, and on the other hand, it's about when you should be unplugged from technology. So uh, yeah, a few things there, uh, a little bit of sort of Luddism coming in. I think it's always quite useful as long as it's not too destructive um, after everything's mixed. <clears throat> but I also now add a little uh, the Gain app um, and it's just switched off most of the time. The reason I have it there is that I've got it set up so that I can switch it on and go into mono mode. Now what I've found is that I can mix initially better by mixing in mono. Uh, I've heard a, a, lot of, um, a lot of people say this and uh, I tried it out on a few tracks and uh, even uh, a few tracks that I've been quite happy with the mix when I've run them through or switched off stereo made them into mono I've actually been able to hear that some things just need to be pulled out or pushed in a little bit more um, it really has made a big difference uh, and it's certainly the way I'm going to continue working <laughs> trying to get an EP out before the album and so I just decided that what I would do was um, I would get rid of um, any thoughts of doing more of the album just have these three tracks which are going to be the EP tracks uh, gave them over to the guy who was going to master the three tracks for me and he came back with some feedback which is uh, useful stuff uh, a few things that I, I agreed with and uh, a few things I didn't um, but it was it was good, and um, I realised that there was some um, uh, sibilance on one particular track, and it's amazing how you can just stop hearing things. I've said this before. Even though you think, oh yes, yeah, it's, it's bright, and uh, maybe it's a thing particular uh, with with me that uh, I just stop hearing. The, the issue and it becomes acceptable, it becomes part of the sound, possibly uh, listening to the track too much, I don't know, but uh, so anyway, uh, I had this little bit of feedback and 
guy says, uh, yeah, we're all coming together, these few things. And one of them was Sibilance on the other track, which is unfortunate because um, uh, part of the one of the main words on the court which is simply peaceful day and that really does stick out and gets quite annoying they're absolutely perfect snug nice and snug for the winter um, and I tried them on the latest track um, and uh, they're, they're just perfect so new new lease of life um, thanks to an old pair of socks and I think possibly slightly over compressed vocal which, which went to print I can just take the compression off because I I, um, I typically compress slightly go it with signal going in and then I might add a little bit more within within the channel um, if, if I think it just needs to punch up a little bit um, but I think possibly I just over <clears throat> overcompensated with the with the um, the compression on my channel strip uh, which is um, this one here there's the channel strip so it's a, it's a focus right channel strip um, I really like it and all I have is the uh, vocals going straight in and then it goes into my uh, complete audio uh, box. So. bell is tuned so I can record it now as we know they're really um, big trebly mid-range things that you can hear from miles away uh, I'm desperate to get the album out um, but the EP has got to come first once the EP is out I can then ask people to review it magazines papers online things uh, such like that um, try and get some feedback um, try and get a little bit of um, uh, play on it from, from places, a bit of interest and obviously it goes up for sale as well on Amazon, uh, Spotify, all the main sites and I, I, <clears throat> I might put it up on SoundCloud, I'm not sure yet.